time for another video about my favorite subject, Lie groups and Lie algebras. So let's start by recalling some definitions. So a Lie group is a group which is also a smooth manifold. So those are fancy words, but what is a smooth manifold? Well, you can think of that as some sort of generalization of a surface. So like the surface of a sphere is an example of a smooth manifold, or maybe this donut shape is also a smooth manifold. And that's how I've drawn a picture for our group G. So it's this donut shape. And, but it's also a group. So that means if we take two points on this manifold G, we can multiply them and we end up with another point on this surface G. So we, here we have X, Y, and they multiply to X times Y. But since this is a surface and more importantly, a smooth surface, we can construct a tangent space at any point on this surface. And in this case, it'll look like a plane, but more generally, it's a tangent space. It may have more than two dimensions. And if we look at the tangent space at the identity, we get a super special object known as the Lie algebra. That's what we have written down here. So the associated Lie algebra, which is this fancy G, is the tangent space at the identity. And that's what I've drawn here. So I've arbitrarily put the identity right here. Well, capital G is a group, so we know that it has an identity element. And then we've constructed this tangent space to this group at that spot. Now here's some notation for that. And you read this as G is the tangent space of capital G at the identity. Now I'd like to look at a couple of interesting questions. First of all, what are some natural operations for elements of the Lie algebra? So if you've watched videos before on Lie algebras, you know that Lie algebras are vector spaces. So they're closed under addition and scalar multiplication. And then there's also this other operation known as the bracket operation or the Lie bracket. Well, I wanna motivate those operations in this video. So let's first show that it's closed under addition. Okay, so let's maybe suppose that A and B are in G. And let's keep in mind that that is the tangent space of capital G at the identity. But then viewing these two points as being in the tangent space means they're, well, they're tangent vectors to this group at the identity. But since they're tangent vectors to this group at the identity, that means they should be able to be expressed as tangents to some curve going through the identity. So let's write that down. So this implies there exist curves, I'll call them A of T and B of T, such that a few things are satisfied. So first of all, these go through the identity and we might as well parametrize them so that they go through the identity at time t equals zero. So that means a of zero and b of zero equals one. So we've got curves going around in here and at time zero, they're at the identity. Okay, and then furthermore, since we're bringing these curves into existence to define these elements of the tangent space of the Lie algebra, then we also want A to be equal to A prime of zero and B to be equal to B prime of zero. So by definition of the tangent space, a prime and b prime of zero lie within this tangent space at the identity. But recall that we want to show that this tangent space or this Lie algebra is closed under addition. So let's see if we can do that with the following parts. And let's notice that if we take the derivative with respect to t of a of t times b of t and we plug in t equals zero, then we're actually good to go. So that's gonna give us a prime of zero times b of zero plus a of zero times b prime of zero. 
okay? But a prime of zero is a, b of zero is one. So this just gives us a plus, well look, a of zero is one and b prime of zero is b. So that gives us a plus b. But then the product of these two curves is also a curve through the origin, which means its tangent vectors are also in the tangent space. So that tells us that in fact, A plus B is inside of this tangent space at the origin, or sorry, not at the origin, at the identity, or it's equal to G. Okay, so we've got addition. The next thing would maybe be scalar multiplication. And this is actually very, very straightforward. This would actually maybe be a good like little homework exercise. So I'll just write that here. That's a homework exercise to try after we're done here. Maybe post in the comments if you see a solution. And then, well, what about just regular multiplication? Can we make some meaning out of that? Well, let's try to do that here. So I'll say, what about multiplication? Okay, well, how would we even define that? Well, notice that A times B could be defined in the following way. Well, it'll be A prime of zero times B prime of zero. But notice that that's equal to the derivative with respect to t of the derivative with respect to s of a of t b of s evaluated at t equals zero and s equals zero. But the problem here is via this construction, this thing is not guaranteed inside of the tangent space. So this multiplication is maybe not a good operation for our tangent space, our Lie algebra G. Okay, so let's step back and see what we've seen. Well, addition is a nice operation for the Lie algebra G. Our Lie algebra is closed under addition. So is scalar multiplication by the homework exercise. Well, that makes G a vector space. Remember, all we need for it to be a vector space is addition and scalar multiplication. Well, obviously some other rules have to be satisfied, but those will follow very, very quickly. But can we get some sort of other operation that is maybe natural for the Lie algebra? And we can, but it takes a little bit of trickery. So let's do that. After that little warm up calculation, let's look at another operation. And let's recall our starting points. So if we have A and B inside of the Lie algebra, then that means they can be expressed as tangent vectors to curves through the identity. So we've got A of T, B of T are inside of the group. They go through the identity at zero and their tangent vectors are equal to those elements of the Lie algebra. Okay, and so from here, we're gonna define a family of curves. So let's fix S and define the following family of curves, which I'll call CS of T. And I'd like to point out that this comes from the book Naive Lee Theory by Stilwell. So some information about that book should be on the screen right now. I think it's a nice like introduction to Lie groups and Lie algebras. It has actually more work with Lie groups than I would expect for such a group for such a book. Most of the time you just jump to Lie algebras and prove things about Lie algebras. Okay, wait, anyway, back to this. We've got this C S of T and how are we going to define that? Well, we'll define it as A S times B T times A S inverse. Okay, so we know that those are within the group, those curves. So that means we can combine them in this method. We're like conjugating by A. And now let's notice the following. We have CS evaluated at zero is most definitely gonna be one because that's like A of zero, B of zero, and then um, A of zero inverse, but that's the identity, the identity, and then the inverse of the identity, which is also the identity. But now let's notice for all S, we have CS evaluated at zero is the identity. That's because B of zero is the identity, 
but that just puts AS next to AS inverse and those collide to give you the identity given that they are inverse pairs. Okay, so now let's take the derivative of this with respect to T. So the derivative of CS with respect to T and then we'll plug T equals zero in there. So since the curve A on either side is parameterized with respect to S, we just have to take the derivative of B. This will give us AS and then B of zero, sorry, B prime of zero times AS inverse. But that's going to give us AS and then little b and then AS inverse. But then since CS is a curve through the identity, and then this is the tangent vector to a curve through the identity. That means that all of these are in the tangent space at the identity. In other words, they are all inside of G. Okay, so let's maybe spell that out. So that means for all S from the parameter set, you could take that to be the real numbers if you want. Um, we have AS and then B and then AS inverse is actually an element of that G. So that somehow boosted our combination of curves within the group to a curve in the tangent space. If we think about S as a variable now, that gives us a curve in the tangent space. Now, where are we going to go from here? Well, if this is a curve within the tangent space, then all of its tangent vectors will also be within the tangent space. So in other words, we have the tangent space, which is the Lie algebra, contains all of the tangent vectors of this. So in other words, the derivative with respect to S of ASBA inverse S evaluated at S equals zero. Okay, and now we're going to use a little fact that I think I've proven on the channel before, which has to do with inverses of matrices and maybe a derivative rule for inverses of matrices. So let's recall that little fact over here. And that is that the derivative with respect to S of the inverse matrix A inverse S turns out to be negative A inverse S times A prime of S times A inverse of S. Great. So notice that if we had commutativity, that would be exactly the derivative type rule that we're used to, but since we don't have commutativity, it's not exactly the same. You're flanked on either side by A inverse. Okay, so what does that turn this into? So using the product rule, we'll have A prime evaluated at zero and then B and then A inverse of zero. So that's from taking the derivative of AS and then we'll have minus, well it would be plus, but we've got this minus sign here, and then A evaluated at zero, B, and then this derivative right here. So that'll be A inverse evaluated at zero, A prime of zero, and another A inverse evaluated at zero. So we've got something like that. But now we can go through and do a bunch of simplification. So notice A inverse of zero is the identity, and that's because A of zero is the identity, so if you invert the identity, you get itself. And then similarly, this right here will be the identity, as well as this right here is also the identity, and then this right here is also the identity. So you get a bunch of copies of the identity. And then furthermore, a prime of zero is little a. So we have this is little a, and then this thing over here is little a. But now if you kind of get rid of everything we don't need, all of those identities, we end up with a b minus b a. 
So that means for all elements of the Lie algebra, if you combine them in this way, you end up with another element of the Lie algebra. And that together with the following like standard definition of the Lie bracket of A and B as AB minus BA tells us that this Lie bracket is a nice operation on G. And then once we have that, we can start finding identities that perhaps this bracket satisfy, and that would eventually lead you to the Jacobi identity. And then after that, all you have to do is kind of abstract the whole thing and you get the textbook definition of a Lie algebra. And that's a good place to stop. Thanks for watching and sticking around until the end of the video. And since you're here, don't forget to gently press that like button, subscribe, ring the bell, and select all notifications to never miss a video. If you wanna get your name in the credits like you see here, access the live seminar series, review videos before release, and more, go to patreon.com slash michaelpenmath and become a Patreon member today. If you want full ad-free course content, subscribe to my second channel, Math Major. I've got courses on linear algebra, complex analysis, and proof writing, among several others. And that's everything. Bye.